Welcome to our class in Chassidus. We're going to be learning this week a beautiful Chassidic discourse in the Rebbe. The name of the Chassidic discourse is called Bahalois Chas Haneiros. The Rebbe said this Chassidic discourse on Wednesday of Parshas Bahalois <coughs> which was the 15th day of the month of Sivan, in the year Tafshin Lamedalid, 48 years ago. The Rebbe went on to certify and edit this Chassidic discourse in honor of Taf. Tes Vav Sivan, which is the 15th day of the month of Sivan, in the year Tafshin Mem Tes, 33 years ago. Tes Vav Sivan is the day that the previous Rebbe was arrested for spreading and teaching Chassidus, and later on he was released on Yud Beis Tammuz. Now in Chassidus we always look at the positive things in life, and the fact is, even though the imprisonment was not a good thing, but because after Yud Beis Tammuz, there was a, tr- a tremendous expansion in teaching of Hasidus. So therefore, in retrospect, the Tesla of Sivan is a very, very special day on the Chabad Jewish calendar. So again, the Hasidic discourse is based on the verse in this week's Torah portion where it says, Baha'u'llah when you'll elevate, when you'll kindle the, the, the candles, El Mul Pnei HaMenoira, to the face, to the center of the Menoira, Ye Iru Shiva Saneiros, the seven candles will give off light to it. So the Rebbe brings from the previous Rebbe, and he, who's, who again was celebrating the anniversary of the fact that he went into prison on the, t- on the 15th day of the month of Sivan, and later on was redeemed on Yud Beis Tammuz. So he brings an Hasidic discourse with the name of the Hasidic discourse by Alois Chasaneiros, and he asks a very simple question. The verse starts off and it says, by Alois Chasaneiros, you light the candles. How many? It doesn't say. But then what happens afterwards? It says you're going to light seven candles. Why in the beginning doesn't it say a number? And later on it gives a number. That's question number one. Question number two, the previous Rebbe asks, it says, El Mul Pnei Hav the Menorah, to the center of the Menorah, the seven candles will give light. So the fact is like this, in the middle of the Menorah, they had one candle, which is called the Nair and Tzai, the middle candle. So if the middle one, if these, you have one in the middle and the three on each side is facing towards the middle one, why is it seven towards the middle? It's technically six towards the middle one. The middle one is, is, is the seventh one. That's the second question. <clears throat> so the Rebbe explains like this, that the point of the explanation is as follows. So even though when you read in the parsha it says, well, you light like the candles, referring to the candles based on Migdash, the seven candles, the center candle, etc., but if you look deeper, when it says, when you'll light, you'll kindle, you'll elevate the candles, and later on when it says that the seven candles will shine, we're talking about two different candles. And that will answer a lot of the, qu- the questions that we had before. In other words, like this. When the, when the Torah says, you'll, 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 uh, uh, you'll um, uh, light the candles, you'll elevate the candles, so that doesn't say how many candles. What candles are they talking about? They're talking about simple candles. What are the simple candles? They're referring to the souls of the Jewish people. Neshamot. Now why, what does Neshamot have to do with candles? Because souls are called candles. Like it says in the prophets, Neir Hashem Nishma Saddam. So you see there's a clear connection in the prophets between Neir, a candle, and a Shama. So even though it says Ba'alo but since we know that Neir Hashem Nishma Saddam, so when it says Neir without saying a number, it's referring to the souls of the Jewish people. Now, what's the connection between a candle and a soul? Because if you look at a candle and you light the candle, the fire is trying to cleave on high. If not for the for the candle and the wick pulling it down, the fire will leave. Where's the candle going? Where's the fire going? So it, it, it wants to be included into the, it's called in Kabbalah, the Eish HaKlali, the general fire, which is sitting underneath the sphere of the, of, 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 the, of the moon. And like the Rambam explains at land and also in Chassidus. So just like the candle, the flame, it wants to go to its source, to the Eish HaKlali, the fire which is underneath the moon. The same thing also, the soul in its nature wants to go higher and higher, and it wants to go to its source where it comes from. So again, just to recap, what the Rebbe is saying is, when it says, what is it referring to? It's referring to the souls. 
What's the connection? Ne'er Hashem Nishma Saldam, the verse, and also in, in, its, in its quality of what it is. Just like a candle is always going to, wants to go to its source, Aish under the, the, uh, the sphere of the, of the moon. So the same thing also, the soul wants to go back to its source. Now, that's the nature of the Neshama. So every Neshama, its nature is it wants to cleave to Hashem. That's the nature of the Neshama. However, the Neshama, the soul, that was part of God, in order for it to come down to this world, it went through the world of Atsilus, the highest world, and then through Bria, which is already a creation. It means God is concealed more, and Yitzira, a formation God is concealed even more, and down to the world of Atsira, God is concealed even more. So what happens is, when the soul comes down into the world of Bria, Yitzira, and Asiya, so God is more con- God's concealed on each one uh, e- e- uh, more. So what happens is that yearning that the soul has, it has it, but it's concealed because the concealment covers up the concealment. So Aaron's job is You know what Aaron's job is to awaken and to reveal that nature the soul has to cleave on high. That's what that's what Aaron's job is to reveal to reveal that part of our neshama. Bahalois to elevate the candles, to elevate our souls. That this nature, not second nature, not even a, a learned behavior, that in na- the nature of the soul which wants to cleave on high should become revealed. So, in other words, so, how, so based on this, what, how do we explain Bahalois Khasanaris according to Kabbalah? Very simple. The neighbor is referring to the soul. And the soul naturally wants to cleave to Hashem. But in the world of Bri, it's CLC, it's concealed. So the job of Aaron is, Ba'aloischa, to inspire us that that nature that we have, we want to cleave to Hashem, shouldn't be in a concealed way, but should be done, what? In a revealed way. That's the first half, Ba'aloischa Saneiris. And then what, then the, the verse continues on to say, via Iru Shiva Saneiris, that the seven candles should give light, what is that referring to? That's not referring to the souls. That's referring to the light. Yeiru from light. Shiva Sanei is referring to the light in, in, um, in, the, in the heaven, on, in, in the sky. And others, like it says in the Medrash as follows, that the Mishka on the tabernacle is compared to the whole world. In other words, everything that, that, that took place when Hashem created the world, you have in the Mishkan. So the Mishkan is a microcosm of the world. Now the, the Medrash says, the Menoira, the candelabra that was in the Mishkan, that is connected to when Hashem created the world. He said, Yehima Oireis, there should be lights, Berkiah Shemayim in the heaven. So that's connected to the Menoira. Now, if that's the case, you can say, okay, very nice. So, so why is there seven candles? When Hashem created the world, there was a sun and the moon, not seven. Not, not seven. So why does it say there should be seven candles? And it was even though when Hashem said to create, there should be Ma'oyrois, so Hashem made two lights. So the Rebbe explains very simple. Because the sun and the moon, the two lights, were, <coughs> were the main lights. But in, if you look more in specific and detail, there's actually seven lights. So yes, the sun and the moon is two, that's the main, but there's five more lights. So when the verse finishes off, it says, it's referring to what? The lights. The lights that light up the world. The sun, the moon, and the other five lights. So based on the Shiva explains very simple. What, what does that mean? When Aaron goes ahead to the Neshamois, to the, to the souls of the Jewish people, and inspires us to cleave, to bring our, our natural instinct to cleave to Hashem and to be in a revealed way, you know, the souls of Bri, at Sirat, Asiya should have a willingness to cleave to Hashem in a revealed way. What will happen then is, Yeiru Shiva Saneiros. Then, then what will happen is there'll be, there'll be an addition, an additional light that will be generated into the lights that line, light up the world, just like he gives the example where it says in reference to Sarah, Abraham's wife, that she actually added into the Ma'oyres into the light. And like the, it's brought down in the Zoyer, it says, there was a note over here, but the Zoya says that Sarah couldn't have children. She says, okay, I can't have children, I can't have children, but she wasn't going to give up. She made sure she was able to have children, and she basically added light into the world. Again, the Zoya goes into many, many other explanations, but that's just a short point to bring out that Sarah had the power to add into the light. So the same thing also, to recap what they're saying here is that how do you, how do you see this verse? 
but it's referring to the souls of the Jewish people. And the souls of the Jewish people naturally cleave to Hashem, but in this world it's concealed. Aaron's job is that we should be revealed, our, our cleaving to Hashem should be in a revealed way. When we do that, then Ye'iru, Shivas, and Eres, we add into the seven lights of light of the world, the sun, the moon, and the other five lights of light of the world, we add into that light. So the goes on to say as follows. This, that the, we gave an explanation that Baloyz Chasenei is referring to the souls. But the fact is, the simple meaning of Baloyz Chasenei means that's referring to the candles. You should light the candles of the menorah. In other words, so that's a simple meaning. But the spiritual meaning, the chassidus, the premius, the internal meaning is it's referring to the souls. What's the connection? Because the, the, because the candles of the souls, that's the, the premius, that's the internal part of the menorah. So even though technically it's referring to the menorah, but since it's connected to the souls, so obviously in the, in the menorah, in an internal way, you have the neshamas are in there. Why is that? Besides the fact that we learned before that the souls are called candles, like the candles of Menorah, and 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 that's why in the in the in the in the in the Menorah there were seven candles. Why? Because the fact is the the nair, the candle of the Jewish people, the seven different types. So, so based on this, Shabbos says one second. If we're saying is that. The simple meaning, Baleis Chasenei is referring to candles. What's the candle connection to the Neshamas, so the Jewish people? And we know in the Neshamas is different types, so that's why there's different types of candles. So if that's the case, it's back to the same question. How come when it comes to the, 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 um, the, the, the lighting of the candles, where it's referring to lighting up the world, it says seven candles, but in the first half, we're speaking about the souls, it only says in there without dividing it up to seven, seven levels. So why why doesn't it divide it up into seven levels? Even the, since it's connected to the shamas, I mean, even in the shamas there are seven levels. So we're going to understand this based on what the altar explains in the Kutta Torah, which is the altar is classic Hasidic insight into the parsha, and he says as follows: the seven candles of the menorah are actually referring to seven types of Jewish people in the way they serve Hashem. What does that mean? Seven types, and he explains. There are those that serve Hashem with Ava, with love. What type of a love? A love that's flowing like water, which is chesed. A love that's flowing, it's consistent, um, it's, it's stable, etc. So it's a love, but it's a consistent love. But then there's a love which is like fire, which is called gvura. Highs and lows, and it's, it's on fire. So in love, there's different levels. So there's one type of love, which is like chesed, Ava, Ava of chesed, like flowing like water. And the other one is what? Like fire, which is gvura. And, he, and the Altar explains many, many different levels and levels of souls. In other words. So the fact, as Rebbe says, these seven different type of neshamos that serve Hashem, even though it's only really, a, in, in, it's all, the all difference is the way they serve Hashem. They're all serving Hashem, but it's, it's different only in the way they serve Hashem. But nevertheless, even though it's only in the way they serve Hashem, not whether they serve Him or not, they're still called seven candles. Why? Because a neshama is called a, ca- a candle, and also there's different types of neshama the way we serve Hashem. So, but nevertheless, it, 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 it's, 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 it's not connected to the essence of the person. Why? Because we know it's brought down in the Talmud in the, in the end of the tract, a condition that says like this Ani nevresi l'shamash koini. I was created to serve Hashem. Why were we created? For one purpose only to serve Hashem. And it's actually another um, way it's written um, is not only I was created to serve Hashem, but it says I need loyni vresi el l'sham In other words, I wasn't. The first insight is I was created to serve Hashem. The second is no, I, 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 I was not created only to serve Hashem. It means the only reason I'm, I'm here is to serve Hashem. You can say I have other things to do. Okay, I'm also here to serve Hashem. No, no, the only reason why I'm created is to serve Hashem. In other words, so since I was created to serve Hashem, if I serve Hashem through Ava, that is who I am. I'm serving Hashem in that fashion. If I'm serving Hashem through Yira, and that's my way to serve Hashem, that's who I am. So you see that the way we serve Hashem, it's not just a, a type, but it's really in our personality. So there's different personality levels to our soul level of the way we serve Hashem. 
there's different type of neshamas literally in our source. Again, some people in their source, their essence is to have love of chesed, consistency, stability, calmness, and some people are always on fire. And that's why they, they were created, to serve Hashem in that fashion. Now, so you see this difference there's differences. So if there's differences, then it should have said, is not stam. It should have said, when you'll kindle the seven candles, since everyone has their way of serving Hashem. Not in, a, not in a, the way they serve, but literally in their, in their service, that's who they are. So Rebbe says, well, understand, that the way it's explained somewhere else, it, it, with a, with, if you look specifically, when it says the term, Ani Nivresi, I was created, L'sham is trying to serve my creator. In other words, this that we were created, created, nevresi, created to serve Hashem. So what's the term it uses? It doesn't say ani etzalti, ani etzarti, ani asisi. No, it's the uh, term uh, connecting to the world of Atzila, so It's specifically connected to what's the idea of Bria. In other words, the way the soul comes down into the world of Bria. In other words, there's, there's, there's different levels of souls. You have the soul the way it's in the level of Tehoyra, which is connected to the world of Atsilas, and then you have the soul the way it's going to Bria, and then it goes down, obviously, world, world's lower than that. So, Anin of Reisha means I was created, starting from Bria, Tzir, Asir, in the same category, and I was created to serve Hashem. And since I was created to serve Hashem, and then a soul is a part of Hashem, so it's not created for something else. Or, 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 or to serve Hashem. In other words, the essence of my creation is to serve Hashem in this manner. So in other words, when you divide a, um, every single person the way you serve Hashem, it has to do with the way we serve Hashem on, um, of the level of Atta Barasa and not in the, es- in the essence of who we are. In other words, what they're ever saying is like this. Let me explain. We, we say, Ani Nevresi L'Sham Hashem Shaskoni. I was... Created and the term is the specific term is nivresi uh, uh, from Bria to serve Hashem. That means like this: starting from the world of Bria, going down to the world of Yitzira Asiya, everyone has their unique way we serve Hashem. So one is serving Hashem from Ava, one of of Chesed, one uh, of Mayim, one is serving Hashem from Ava, from Love, of Aish, Gvura, etc. And the seven different ways Alter explains in the Kodesh Torah. So starting from the world of Bria, that's who I am. That's the way I serve Hashem. By the way, you can change throughout life. But your, your natural way you serve Hashem, and then you have a, a learned way to serve Hashem. But starting from the world of Bria, you have your unique way of serving Hashem. So I mean of Reisi, I was created to serve Hashem. My unique way of serving Hashem starts where in the world of Bria. What happened before Bria? From the world of Atsilos, from the world of Tahirahi, there, there's no, there's no differences. It's all one. Because in the world of Atsilas, everything is one. There's no separation between light and vessels. The, the, there's a difference already starting in the world of Abriya. So based on this, Dreb explains like this. This that the verse says, Baha'lois you'll elevate, you'll kindle the candles. And it doesn't say specific amounts of candles. It says, Ne'er Stam. So he's, why, is he, why isn't he spelling out the different ways of serving Hashem? Because he's trying to hint that the elevation of the soul, Baha'u'llah, you elevate the soul, is even to the level of Tahoira, even to the level of Atsilos, which is higher than dividing things up, Neiristam. In other words, this that we, we explained before, Baha'u'llah, Neiristam, that Aaron's job was to elevate the souls that came down to Bria, Yitzira, Asiya, and the, the yearning for Hashem is not in a revealed way. So what happens is God concealed in the world of Bria Asiya. So Aaron's job is to awaken within him. They should have that love for Hashem in a revealed way. That's the beginning of the job of the elevation. But what happens when he finally elevates them, they go to a higher level. They go to the level of before they came down to Bria, the way, they're in, the way, the, the way they are in the world, the, the world of, of, of Atzillus. So now, as the is explaining it as follows, which is important before we go forward. forward. It's a deep concept. The is saying like this. In the world of Atsilas, an Hashem of Atsilas, we're all one. We all serve Hashem in the same way, in a revealed way. When you go down to the world of Bri Yatsiyah, so everyone serves Hashem differently. 
That's point number one. And point number two is we serve Hashem, but it's in a concealed way. It's not revealed. So in Bri, Yitzir, Asiya, yes, there's differences. There's seven types of Jew- souls. Aaron's job is to elevate us out of the world of Bria. A, two components. One is that we serve Hashem in a revealed way. And B, we should go out from the level that we're I'm me and you're you and I serve Hashem like this and you serve Hashem like that. We should reach the level of Bahaloitzchas and Eiroiz. It's candles, not seven different type of candles. We're all one candle because ultimately we all serve the same Hashem in the level of Atsilos. That's our job. A, to reveal it within us, that we should serve Hashem in a revealed way. But B, we should serve Hashem up to the point where we le- reach the level of Tehoi the world of Atzillus, where there's no difference between one person and the other. And that's why it says, Ba'alois Chasaneiris, even those different ways to serve Hashem, the different ways start in the world of Bria. But Ba'alois Chasaneiris, when he elevates you to the world of Atzillus and the world of Tehoi then it's all Neiris, it's all one, it's one serving Hashem. The Rebbe says, now we're going to understand this based on a teaching of the Maggot of Mezrich. Magen is rich teachers based on the on the, on this on the verse on this week's Torah portion by Loiskas Neiris. You should elevate the candles. So till now we have by Loiskas Neiris referring to the literal candles. We have the candles referring to the Shemus the, the souls of the Jewish people in, in the world of, Bri- of Bria. And the job of Aaron was to reveal to to reveal it our our, our yearning for Hashem. And ultimately by Loiskas Neiris to elevate us to the level of Neiris of what of level of of the world of Atzilus. Magen gives a different insight and he says like this: What does by Loiskas Neiris mean? Nair is referring to mitzvahs. What's the connection with a candle and a mitzvah? Because it says clearly in the prophets, ki nair mitzvah, that the candle's mitzvah. So you see that nair is connected to mitzvahs. So therefore, when it says about loisus and nairis, it's referring to the mitzvahs. That's what the manga says. What does that mean practically? You now, it's just like you have a candle. So a candle is, a, is, a, is wax or oil, and you have a wick, and then you have a fire. So in the candle, you have a fire. So the same thing also, he says, a mitzvah, you have the mitzvah, the technical mitzvah, whether it's keeping Shabbos, kashras, filling the family, purity, whatever the mitzvah is. So you have the technical part, but then you have the premius, the light of the mitzvah. What is the light of every mitzvah? What's the fire of every mitzvah? The fire of every mitzvah is Ava and Yira, the love for Hashem and the awe for Hashem. That's the fire of every mitzvah. In other words, just to recap before we go forward, so the Magad of Mizitra saying is, you should elevate the candle. What are we referring to? Candles referring to mitzvahs. What's the connection? Like we said, near mitzvah. And the point of one is just like in a candle, you have the fire. The same thing also in every single mitzvah, you have the fire. What's the fire of a mitzvah? The love and offer Hashem. So what does it mean? They should elevate the candles. And, was, and there it says, Baloischa Eshanei, you should elevate the candles. So S means the, but also means, could also mean a width, im, width. In other words, so what, what, what the Magnus is explaining like this, Baloischa S, you should elevate the Neiros. How should you elevate it? S translates width, Neir is mitzvah. So how should you elevate? How do you want to elevate yourself? With mitzvahs. You want to get elevated. You want to go get a, go, get, connect to Hashem on a deeper level by doing a mitzvah. And the and the way and what happens is when you elevate yourself, then Baloischas and Neiros, when you elevate yourself through a mitzvah, El Mul Pnei you face the premius, the internal part. Powerful teaching in the Magen is rich. And like he gives an example, like it says in the in the Ten Commandments. What does it say in the Ten Commandments? By Yidabre Lokim, Hashem spoke as Kol Hadvarim Aila. All these words, Lamer saying Anoichi. That's the verse. So, the, so he explains very simply, he says like this. But God spoke as Kalad Varimela. What are all these words? What, what are all these words? It's referring to all the mitzvahs. Hashem spoke all the mitzvahs. Lamer. What does Lamer mean? That a person should think. And what should he say? Anoichi b'layilacha. All these mitzvahs, what should you do? Anoichi b'layilacha. What does Anoichi b'layilacha mean? Again, by God spoke all these words, all these mitzvahs, 613 commandments God's giving us. To say what? Anoichi b'layilacha. What's the connection? So he explains as follows. Anoichi, you take the first letter from Anoichi is an Aleph, and the first letter from Viloy, uh, and you should not have, is a Vav and Yud, it stands for um, Ava Viyira. In other words, you take all the mitzvahs, and you take all the mitzvahs, what do you do with it? You infuse Anoichi Velayilacha, which stands for Ava and Yira. Which is the abbreviation for Avinir. So you put Avinir, love and awe of Hashem, into all the mitzvahs. 
And also backwards, he says, you take Ava and Yira, love and awe. So you take the first letter from Ava is Aleph. And then also the year of Vav Yud is also, the you knows Anoichi is connected to Ava, and La Yilach is connected to Yira. So you should bring in Ava and Yira into all the mitzvahs, and in all the mitzvahs you should bring in Ava and Yira. And what happens then is, La Yilach Alpanai, when you bring in love and awe in all the mitzvahs, then Alpanai, then you get to the premius, then you get to the essence, and what's the essence of the essence of Hashem? So, you know, you have the same idea when it comes to Baalois Chasanei, the teaching in the Magid, is the same thing we find when we find the reference to when, when, when all the mitzvahs, when Hashem gave the commandments. You know, the goal is to infuse within all the mitzvahs, Av of Yira, and when you infuse with Av of Yira and all the mitzvahs, then you get Alpana, then you get to the essence of Hashem. And that's why it says Alpnei HaManeira, to the essence of Manoira, Yeiru Shivas Haneiros, which is what is the seven candles referring to? The seven, the seven um, t- uh, uh, spiritual building blocks of Ava, which is connected to Chesed, Yir, which is connected to Gura, Tiferes, etc. But the goal is to bring it all together. When you bring Ava and you and you, and you, you do all the mitzvahs with all the spheres, with all the passion, all the excitement, then you get to the essence of Hashem. Now, so everybody explains very simple. What, what does that mean? In other words, in the essence of the mitzvah, it says two components. What does that mean? On the first level is when a person does a mitzvah. So a mitzvah is like a body. A candle. A candle is a vessel. But when you do a mitzvah, what happens is as you do the mitzvah, even if you're not inspired, just do the mitzvah, you check it off, and you do it, uninspired mitzvah, you will come to the level of Av and Yer Hashem. Because the fact is when you do, you get happy, you, you feel happy. So when you do another mitzvah, you start getting the love for Hashem. You do more mitzvahs, you feel the, the awe for Hashem. And uh, and that's why Anoichi, the first commandment, which is the which includes all the mitzvahs, as we said before, that's the the, the Rosh Hashanah. If you take the first letters of Ava and Yira, love and a uh, love and awe for Hashem. Why? Because this the, the the essence, which is the love and awe for Hashem, is just like the light of the candle that that the light and the candle have a connection. So in other words, like this, what Rabbi is saying is, when a person does a mitzvah. And you do it with Ava and Yira, then you create the perfect union. So the mitzvah brings the, the love and the awe, the love and brings the mitzvah, and that, cre- that creates the, 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 the perfect connection with the mitzvah. You have the body and the soul of the mitzvah. That's one level. What's the next level? The next level is after you're doing with Ava and Yira different levels, you reach premius, the essence of Hashem, a higher level. Um, Alpanai. And as you reach the, the true essence of Hashem, so, so again, so what they're saying is when it comes to mitzvah, there's two levels. One is you're doing the mitzvah with Ava and Yira. And again, it's a level because it's Ava, it's Yira, etc. But ultimately, you're doing the mitzvah connecting to Hashem himself. So based on this, River explains the connection between these two insights of when it says, Ba'aloyz chesaneiros. Where they should elevate the candle. So one insight is, well, what is the candles referring to? It's referring to the souls. You have to elevate the souls. Which, which means Aaron's job was to reveal the nature of the soul which wants to go up, but it's concealed in the world of Briya And what happens after Aaron reveals that, it creates an elevation. They go even higher to the level of Tahiri, the level of Atsilas, before it came down here. So what happens is in all these things, there's two things that happen. One is by doing the mitzvah and infusing Abhira, that's the first level. And after you do the mitzvah and you fuse the Abhira, you actually reach the higher level of Baloyz Chasneris. So there was this, the two insights in Baloyz Chavaneris, where it's referring to the different Nishamis, or it's referring to elevating to a higher level, they go together. Because what happens when Aaron inspires that we should go ahead and bring out our love for Hashem in a revealed way, and that's whether it's this type of love, that type of love, then we reach a higher level of, of, of premium of Hashem. In other words, this that the soul gets inspired with a rotsi, a willingness, with tremendous love, which is above logic, because there's logical connection, but love is even much higher than that. And those, <clears throat> even though this is um, this reaches al pnei to the face of which is the essential part of the Manoira, that's the first level, just like av v'yira, which is the first level. But what happens is afterwards, after you really connect with Amr Yir to the Pneumonera, you reach to the level of Atsilas, the higher level, which is the premius of, um, of Al, Al Pne to the literally to the face of, to the, face of the Menorah. Now, 
Rabbi is going to explain this now uh, even even deeper, uh, even deeper. And he says like this: the neshama, our, our souls, even the way the, we have the neshama, which is part of our body, and you have the neshama, which is on high. So it's just like he gives the example that when a child is born, where does the child come from? So it comes from the intellect of, of the father. That's where it comes from, the highest level. Even though you have a physical child, but in its source, it start, the process started out in the intellect of the father. That is one level. But the essence of the soul is deeper than the intellect, because the intellect is a level. It's actually connected to the essence of, it, the essence of Hashem. Just like the son, <clears throat> which is in the, in the in intellect of the father before it came down, and it was before it, it, it before it even had the, the the idea to come down to this world. In other words, like this: there's two levels in the source of the soul. One is in the intellect, and one is even higher in the essence of Hashem. Now, so you have the soul where it's in the highest level, the essence, intellect. No, it comes down to this world. But what happens when the neshama finally comes down to this world, and it does its spiritual work? to awaken and to reveal its natural wanting for Hashem, that's like the yearning of a child that wants to be with his father. And when the child wants to be with the father, what happens is it reveals the essence of the soul, just like it's connected on the atmos, the essence of Hashem. In other words, in reference to the soul, that the soul is coming from the intellect, so to speak, of the, of the father, when it comes down to Bria, Yitzir, Asira, or how much more so when it comes down into even literally in this physical world. So what happens is it gets concealed. The source gets concealed. Because the fact that it's brought down in Kabbalah and Exodus says that ultimately only the Neshamot of Atzils are called children because they're really, really connected. Now, but when it comes down to this world, even though it's concealed, the fact that it's the part of it that's revealed which means the fact that it wants to have an elevation, that's like a child that yearns, yearning to be with his father. How does that happen? By revealing the essence of the soul, where it's in the intellect of his father, be, be, you know, on the higher level, even before it came down. In other words, because in reference to this level, before it, in, the, in the source, over there, Atsilos and Bri Yitzir is all equal. And what Jeremiah is saying is like this. You have the neshama, the way it comes down to this world. You have the neshama, the way it's in the... the uh, 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 let's start with the parent, the, the mashal, and then we'll give the nimshal. The way it's in the intellect of the, father, of the parents. And then even the higher than that, in the essence of the parents. The same thing also in the neshama, when it comes down to this world. You have the part of the neshama, the way it comes from the intellect of Hashem. And that's the part that yearns. And then you have the essence of the soul, which is connecting the essence of Hashem. So based on this, Rebbe explains... Well, it's brought down in the Kutli Torah on the verse um, where it says in the, in the Prophets, which is actually the, the Haptorah of uh, Pasha Bala Yisra. So it says in the, in, the, in the Prophet, he prophesies, he says, Vehine menoira zav kula. He saw a candelabra made out of gold. And, and the Prophet continues on to say, Zed dvar Hashem. This is the word of Hashem, El Zrubavel. In other words, the question is, he saw a candelabra made out of gold. And the word of Hashem to Zerubbabel. What's the connection between a candelabra and the word of Hashem to Zerubbabel? And he explains like this. What is the Dvar Hashem? Dvar Hashem, the word of Hashem, is the source of the souls. The word of Hashem is the source of the souls. And what is the source of the souls speaking to Zerubbabel? What does Zerubbabel mean on a spiritual level? Because the Jewish people, um, Zerubbabel, Babel comes from the word of Babylonian exile, in the time of exile, of Babylonian exile, they're called Zru Babel. Like Zru, it is from two words. Zru comes from Zerati, Hashem planted, and Babel literally into, in, in, into, into exile. So the connection of the candelabra with Zru Babel is very simple. Because what is the candelabra referring to? We just learned. The candelabra is referring to the, the souls of the Jewish people. And the Dvar Hashem is the source of the souls. Zru Babel, the way the souls are in this world. So that's the beautiful connection between the candelabra and Zerubbabel. The candelabra is the souls of the Jewish people. Dvar Hashem is the source and the way they come down to this world. So I ask one second, a simple question. Very nice. I get it. Beautiful. The candelabra is the souls. The source of the souls is the way it comes down to this world. But what's the connection between the fact that the, 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 the menorah, 
is referring to the souls and the fact they come down, they, they, they're, they're planted in this world. So Rebbe explains and he says like this. It's known that what's the reason why when we come down into exile, the Neshama comes down to our exile, it's called Zriya planting. Why? Because what is the idea of planting? You know, the, why do we come down to exile? You know, the Neshama was on high, close to Hashem. Life was great. Why do we come down to Gullus where God is concealed? And the answer is, because the reason why, yes, it's 100% a downgrade. The soul was an upgrade. It was together with Hashem, with the infinite Hashem. It comes down to this world. It's disconnected from God. God's concealed. But why did Hashem do it? Hashem did it so that there should be your reader. It was a downgrade, no question. But so there should be an elevation afterwards. Just like when you plant in the, in the earth. You take a seed, you put it into the ground, it gets obliterated. But why do you do it? Because it's going to grow something afterwards. And it's going to grow something out tremendous afterwards. Like the Talmud says, a person doesn't go ahead and put in a, a, a saw of, 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 um, of kernels, but you want to get a lot out of it. In other words, the goal of Zerubbabel, the goal of going to exile is that we should have tremendous success afterwards. And that's the connection now that explains between the, the golden candelabra with Zerubbabel. Why? Because what's the idea of you elevating the candles? Because when you elevate the candles, the goal is to bring out, reveal the essence of our soul. And how do we reveal the essence of our soul? How does our essence of our soul get revealed? Specifically through the spiritual work in exile. And like, and like we already we explained before already, that the revelation of the essence of our soul comes specifically when the soul comes down to this world. And, and specific, that's in general. And specifically, when we do our spiritual work in the darkest times of exile, that's when the greatest revelations take place. And that's why the Jewish people are called Zerubbabel. Why? Because we're, we're planted in exile. We're planted in exile, now, and Zerubbabel is actually the first exile. What, but what, so what's the connection now with the candelabra? To, to remind us and to teach us that not only in the times of exile, are we a candelabra? In other words, that, what, uh, that, what, uh, like the expression is that um, when we're sleeping, so to speak, in Gullus, Hashem is alive, the, the candle is alive. But more than that, when we go down into Gullus, we go down to exile, and we plant into exile, what happens is we actually get a greater revelation and a greater upgrade. So in other words, they're explaining as follows. The purpose of going into Gullus is not to get back to the same place. The purpose is to go to a higher place. And that's why he brings the example of the candelabra, Bahaloiskos and Neiros, that we're going to go to the level of Atsulos, and it happens specifically by planting in Gullus. Yes, it's a downgrade, but from the downgrade, we're going to have a great, much greater upgrade. Now, Jobber continues on to say as follows Just like According to what we explained by Halois Chasoneros, what is it referring to when you're going to kindle the, the, the candles? It's referring to the souls. And how do you, and, and what's what, what do you mean you kindle souls? That Aaron's going to reveal the, 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 the yearning that we have for Hashem. When we reveal it, we're going to go not to the level of Bri at CRC, we have different levels. We're going to go to the level of, of Atsilos, a higher level. So the main elevation takes place. Has it happened? It happens when we bring out the source of the soul, not where it comes from Moyacha, from the intellect, but it comes from the Atmos, the essence of, us, of Hashem. So the same thing also, there are explained, just like it applies to the soul, the same thing applies to the Magad's teaching that Baalois Chaneris is going on Mitzvah as well, as well. Because the elevation that takes place in the Mitzvahs comes from not the level of the soul, which is from Moya Chav, but only from Atmos, from the essence of Hashem Himself. In other words, when we, the Jewish people, observe mitzvahs, and who's observing it? The source of our soul is in the essence of Hashem. So we, what happens then is we actually draw the Atmos, the essence of Hashem, into the mitzvahs. In other words, like we explained before, that when a person does a mitzvah, when you do the mitzvah, what happens when you do the mitzvah? By doing the mitzvah, that will bring you to love and awe of Hashem. Sometimes you don't feel inspired. You don't have the love. You don't have the awe. Do the mitzvah. The mitzvah will bring you to the love and awe of Hashem. In other words, because on one hand, the mitzvah is higher than the person doing the mitzvah. And they actually can feed us. They can infuse us with Avra and Yira. And they can infuse us with love and awe for Hashem, which is above logic. And you can't get to it by, lo by logic. And how does it come? It comes specifically by doing the mitzvah. So that's the first level. So the first level of doing a mitzvah is like this. 
When a person goes ahead and does a mitzvah, even though you're not in the mood and you don't want to do it, mitzvahs are higher than you on the first level, and therefore we approach things logically. But logic will only take you so far, but when you do the mitzvah, you bring an avvayir, a love and awe, and that will take you at a whole different level, on the first level. But what happens is, after you do the mitzvah, and you have this love above logic relation with Hashem, so then you reach the first level of... of, of um, um, then what gets revealed is the soul, the way our souls connect with the essence, the essence of Hashem. The second level of Pnei In other words, the, the face of Hashem. And then we bring down this powerful level into the mitzvahs. So what Jeremiah is saying is like this a very, very clear beauty. I'll try to paint it out in a clear picture. When we go ahead and we do a mitzvah, when we get we connect to doing mitzvahs, that gives us love and all for Hashem. We go away from things thinking logically and we connect on above logic. Once we connect above logic, then we connect to the essence of Hashem. And then we bring that essence of Hashem into the mitzvahs. Like the Torah brings the, the, the uh, teaching Chazal um, based on the verse that says, Magid the Vor of the Yaakov, Chuk of Mishpat of Yisrael, that, that um, Hashem um, uh, 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 teaches us um, his words and his statutes, etc. In other words, what, what is a simple understanding is that whatever Hashem, whatever Hashem um, tells us to do, He does it. But we know that another insight is that when we do the mitzvah, we cause Hashem to do the mitzvah. What does that mean? And there is an example, like in reference to the same thing, also in reference to Torah, which we learned many times in, in the classes. In other words, there's, there, there, there's, three, there's three links. Uh, uh, Jewish people, Torah and Hashem. So initially the process is we learn Torah and then we connect to Hashem. But then once we connect to Hashem, we, the us, learn Torah, we connect to Hashem. But once we connect to Hashem, we realize there's a third link that we're connecting directly to Hashem throughout the Torah. And when we connect on that level, then we bring the higher level into Torah. Just like, for example, it says King David would connect the Torah and high with Hashem. In other words, like this. It starts off, we learn Torah. We learn Torah, we connect to Hashem. But we connect to Hashem, we connect to the essence of Hashem. And we bring that back in the Torah, just like when it comes to mitzvahs. So based on the Shabbat explains it's very simple. This is why the Magad of Mizrach said before that, the, what does it mean by halois chas that you're going to elevate the candles, and it was with the candles. What does that mean? You know, you're going to connect, you're going to elevate yourself by doing a mitzvah. What, what does that mean practically? Then it was the person not only elevates himself by doing the mitzvah, but we actually elevate the mitzvahs to the level that we go to the essence of Hashem. The, the second level, Pnei Amnoira, to, to the, the, the level of Al Pnei, we even go even higher. I never finish off and he says like this, and he wants to add actually. Because according to the simple meaning of the verse, El Pnul Pnei Amnoira, to the face of Amnoira, um, is, um, it draws down to the level of the seven candles. In other words, so the, same, and the same thing also works on a spiritual level. That El Pnul Pnei Amnoira, to the face of the Amnoira, to the essence of Amnoira, which is referring to Al Panai, the essence of Hashem, that comes continuation of Al Lois which is which is which is our, which, which is referring to the, with the souls through the souls we reach the, the, the souls, and from there comes what well, we light the seven candles. In other words, this that through our avoida, when we do our spiritual work and we connect to the essence of Hashem, we actually add light into the into the candelabra, just like Sarah Imenu that added light into the candelabra, and those which means like this: not only are we adding light because the moon was diminished, but it actually adds more light to it, um, <clears throat> just like it was the two big lights in the beginning. In other words, even though the world was created complete, but what happens is when we do our spiritual work, we actually re- elevate the work, even higher from before the creation. In other words, like we learned before, when we do our work, we create an elevation in the mitzvahs and in Torah and even in the souls. What happens means, what practically means is that we make the world should be a dwelling place for atzmusay, the essence of Hashem. So what the Rebbe is saying is very simple. Again, just to recap the process in three different ways, and it's all going to the same place. When we go ahead and we learn Torah, or we do mitzvahs, so through the Torah and through the mitzvahs, we're connecting to Hashem. 
But after we connect to Hashem, we connect to the essence of Hashem, and we bring that, that powerful light into Torah, into the mitzvahs, and we make literally the world a dwelling place, not for intellect, not for Avavir, which is also good, but we literally make the world a dwelling place for the essence of Hashem. And they're finished over and he said like this, when we do our spiritual work of Baha'u'llah Yitzchus we elevate the candles, we elevate the neshamos, we elevate the, the, the mitzvahs to the level of Atzillus, and then Ye'iru Shivas Haneiros, we, we, we bring in light into the whole world in all, in all areas, when we do our avoid, what do we accomplish? The main thing we accomplish, we bring close and we usher in the promise that the prophets say, the Lilo Kayoim Yoy, that the night, the darkness is going to be light just like day. And it's going to happen with the redemption, the true redemption, and the complete redemption with Mashiach Tzidkenu. And even before that, and this is very powerful, in the last days of the darkness of Gullus, it knows not when Mashiach comes, but literally in the darkness of Gullus, there's going to be for all the Jewish people in Gullus, there's going to be light in where we live. How's that going to happen? It's going to happen that by each and every one of us adding light and vitality in our spiritual work. So as we add light and life into our spiritual work of learning Torah and doing mitzvahs, not only when Mashiach comes will have the great light, but even now we're going to have the light. And this is going to usher in even more with the promise of the night is going to shine like day. What's going to happen when Mashiach comes and he should come and redeem us and take us straight to, to Eretz HaKodesh. And then we're going to have the ultimate elevation of Baal in all areas. In a complete way, it's going to be done the premius an internal way and an external way both together. So here we have another beautiful, powerful Hasidic discourse of the Rebbe. How you see that we have the power by learning Torah and doing mitzvahs for the Neshama is to reveal our, uh, our our yearning for Hashem, and when we, we, we and then not only not only that, but we actually have the power to connect to the essence of Hashem and bring down the essence of the infinite light of Hashem, literally into our Torah and to the mitzvahs in the world, and like ultimately we'll bring light in our ha- house, and ultimately we'll have the the ultimate redemption. We'll all be together in Yerushalayim or Hakodesh, and let's talk a hope and pray that the next class will be in Yerushalayim or Hakodesh. Have a great and blessed week. Shavua Tov.